Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome to Russian Fishing 4. This is a fishing simulation game. It is brilliant, but with lots of progression, leveling up, skill systems, tons of different fish types, tons of ways of fishing. In these guides, we're going to sort of talk you through the basics of the game. This first video is going to be about the very basics. When you're just getting started out, you've probably either tried the tutorial or done the tutorial. You're starting off at this lovely little mill pond here with your basic equipment. And we're going to sort of take you through the fundamentals, talk about how to sort of basically catch the fish to start with. And you know, basic techniques, and then as the series progresses, we're, as we level up, we're going to sort of talk about in the future episodes what sort of stuff you should be looking to buy first, what baits are good, and then I'm going to do a whole series on different types of fishing and, and the various different lakes that we're and rivers that we're going to fish at and, and good spots to fish and all that sort of good stuff. So welcome, my friends, to, I'm, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the cottage pond, there you go. You don't really stay here very long. This is the sort of tutorial. I've had bigger puddles in my back garden, to be honest. But um, this is our little starter lake. So what we want to do is look at, if you hit I on the, as the keyboard shortcut, it, it gives you basic starter equipment. So it gives you this basic telestick um, rod. We would call it either a pole or a whip in the UK. Remember, this is Russian fishing. There's differences of how they call stuff. But basically, it's a... Um, length of rod with no reel. There's no reeling in. It's just off the tip, and so to speak. Um, we've given a hook because they're useful. We've given been given a little lure if you want to do some spinner fishing, which we'll cover later on. You give some weights that you don't need to worry about. You just have these because that's what needs to go on the float. Couple of baits. We've got thirty worms and thirty bread. With uh, thirty bread, and then we've got food. We've got some threaded loaves, some jingle bell lemonade, and the three tank troopers traditional. A bit of beer basically, and a map of the lake. So first things first, when you arrive at a new lake, if you press M for the map, you can see the lake as it is, possible spots you might want to go and have a look at, and obviously the biggest thing is the depth of the lake. So this one is pretty easy. It just gets deeper as it goes to the middle. So first thing you want to do is click on your rod, and then you want to equip the various things. You only get one set of line, a reel, a, everything's there. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. You get given two hooks. We, we're going to start off with the smaller hook. So um, the size 16, the bigger the number, the smaller the hook. Because fishing, right? We're going to start off with the worm. The worm, both bread and worm are very good baits if you don't really know what's in a lake and because it will catch so much. Like Things like maggot, which we get later on, um, bread and worm will catch most fish. Um, especially worm and maggot. So we're going to start with there. So we've got this sort of set up, and now you want to hit the um, U key, hold down the U key, which is our like, shortcut menu, and you'll see your rod here in your backpack. If you just drag it to the top, once you've done setting it up and stuff, you'll see that it's there. And then when you hit the one key on the keyboard, just whip out your rod at a moment's notice. Always useful. So there's our little wormy hanging on the end. Hello, little, really, really wormy. Um, so... We're going to go out and catch a couple of fish today, and I'll just show you the sort of basic sort of setup and stuff like this. But for a couple of little useful um, shortcut keys, if you want to change the bait, then you just hold the B key down and select a different bait. We've got worm on the hook, so we want to go to bread. We just select that, and it will swap. Go back to worm. Um, C is your keep net, so any fish you keep. The idea of the game is basically you catch fish, you gain experience, you level up, you learn new skills, new types of fishing, but you also, for the fish you catch, you earn money by keeping them when you catch them, and then you sell them at the local fish market. Um, I don't even know if there's one on here, but this is the uh, local... Or if, if you want, and if you ever start off and you lose, you break your reel because you've hooked into Moby Dick or something like that. You can go to this um, little building here and you'll get, if you just hit E, you can get spare tackle. So it'll give you like backup tackle so you never lost out. You can also get a little old bamboo rod that you can use as well. But we're going to start off here and we're going to cast into Mill, Mill Lake. So the plus and minus on your keyboard, as you can see in the bottom right, is the depth from the float to the hook, right? So this, like I said, this guide is going to be for anyone, even if you've never fished before, you should be able to pick it up here. It's a really fun game. A bunch of us from my channel have been completely addicted to it. It's amazing. So the shallowest you can go on this is 17 centimetres. You can go really, really, really deep if you like. But we're going to start off with about 40 centimetres. Around about 40, 50 centimetres is kind of my sort of go-to, if you're not sure. So, um... This is a newbie pond, so we should catch something. Watch if I just don't catch something. So to cast out, 
it's not casting in a normal sense because there's no reel. Is you hold down the right mouse button, left mouse button, um, and you'll get you'll get this sort of percentage marker, and you just let go when you want it. If you just want to do a little cast, little drop it out, you could just do a little one like that. If you want to go um, max, which is ninety two percent, just go to ninety two percent. If you want to go like full beans, you want to give it a full welly, you just hold it down, it pauses, and then it gives you the fucking loves it as hard as you can which is still an underarm cast on this at the end of the day if you want to if you know you want to cast out full beans that's the technical term you just hold down shift and just click it once and you'll get the full cast so with this rod it's just a flick anyway so always look for nice fishy looking spots i imagine there's fish probably all around here but i'm naturally inclined to look at these leads you can hit the z key to zoom in a little bit so we're just going to flick it out relatively near the these weeds here so you can see my float is nice so if you're having trouble seeing it you know you can just zoom in a little bit which makes it easier also like later on you can get special floats that glow in the dark and the sort of stuff like watch as we don't get a buy here um <laughs> we're just sort of sitting here for the next hour going well you know this is awkward what we're going to do is we're going to stay here if we look at if you click on the map here this is where we are and these are all the different venues there's pl they, they the developers who are constantly working on this game say so the game's only like 40 45 percent complete there is a ton more they can introduce ice fishing and fly fishing and all sorts of stuff so you can go to mosquito lake straight away but let's catch a few fish in the, in the newbie zone first and uh which is a lovely little lake then you um at level seven you unlock the winding rivulet and then as you work up you get these amazing lakes and rivers and stuff like that where's my float gone if in doubt strike it there we go so this, my f look at that monster! It is the weight of like a toenail. It's 85 grams. This is a Chinese sleeper. Um, hello there, my friends. So you get experience, as we said, you level up, and you also increase your float fishing skills. So any method you use increases as you use it. So we're loving that. It's up to 0.2%. I'll show you in a later episode more in depth about basically this whole system which is your sort of skills and everything like that um, but we're just here to catch a couple of fish so to strike you can either just sort of hold the left mouse button as if you're casting out which is a pretty sort of slow strike but also you can do it manually just use do a little like that with your rod as you get a bite and you'll be golden the trick with the early with the float fishing in this is don't be too eager I'm hoping we get a couple of, because you'll sometimes the fish will be a little nervous, or it might be a little fish having a little nibble, and the floats like doing a little dance. Don't. That's not the time to strike. Wait until you get a good bite, either with the float going fully under, or the float sort of pushing up as the as the the fish has caught, obviously grabbed the bait and then swam upwards, meaning the float comes up and then just sort of flops over on its side as it gets sort of. There we go. So there's a little little nibbles there, little tiny little nibbles there. And it's lifted up, it's lifted up, and we're just going to go like that. And what have we got? That is a, not a bad little fish, boys. There we go. That is remarkable, decently sized. Um, we have caught a 757 gram cruising carp. And these don't grow massive. You know, these only, on average, grow, you know, a decent sized cruising carp is like a key, one and a half kilos. That is not bad at all. I'd be happy with that with my higher level character. Um, as you can see in the bottom left, you've got, it shows that number one, which is our level. And we're halfway to level two, which is great. Um, the other things there, um, the other four bars on the bottom left there are um, energy. Because when you're in a big fish, when, you've, when you're fighting, I've seen people um, on Twitch and stuff fighting fish for an hour and a half, two hours at late levels. Because there's massive fish. I'll show you some of the records later on. Massive fish in this game. Um, so the energy just sort of slowly goes down, especially when you're fighting a fish for a long time. The next up is food, and food basically increases your energy. So as you get more hungry, your regeneration of your energy is low, and there's lots of little food and drinks you can have to boost that energy so you can sort of fight more. But when we're early levels, and most of the fish we're catching are quite small, we don't have to worry too much about the energy levels. Um, it's all really good. Um, the next is health. Um, I don't think I've ever used that before in my life. So don't worry about it to begin with. We'll cover that when it becomes apparent. At the moment, you know, catching, I was going to say catching these little fish, but we caught a little, a decent sized cruise in there. Um, another thing with float fishing is don't be afraid to move. 
All right, we'll, we'll discuss this when we talk about lake guides and, and proper method guides. I'm going to do a proper float fishing guide. Is that if you cast out and there's nothing nibbling, don't, be, don't feel like you have to leave it there until something grabs it. You can go, okay, I'll try this different spot or move around the lake entirely. Sometimes the fish will mi migrate around the lakes and rivers. Um, so don't be afraid that like that spot that you went to yesterday that was great is now not catching. Well, that, there's a good reason for that. Also, we've got a full weather and night, late, day, night cycle in the game in the top right. So stuff varies on temperature and wind and nighttime. Like catfishing is really good for when it's nighttime because they're mostly nocturnal and feed, um, basically sort of feed by scent rather than sight. Like a perch, is who, which is a predator, is... A sight predator so it waits in the reeds and these little bits here and oh i missed that one and you will miss bites even if you're the best fisherman in the world you will miss bites it's just one of them it's just fishing but like a perch is going to be a predator fish and it's going to see your little worm and shoot out from these reeds grab it in the daytime whereas a catfish basically sits at the bottom of the lake and sniffs stuff it's got like tens of thousands of taste buds all along its body on the outside of its body as well as inside to, to we'll talk about fish more indeed this is a bit more advanced than i thought i was going to go talking about taste buds on catfish um but this is a sort of basic setup so what we'll do here is we'll catch a, try and catch a couple more fish and then we'll head over to the second lake and show you the various different buildings that are at most lakes and rivers and what each of them mean, what each of them do and all that sort of good stuff. There is so much depth to this game. I'm telling you, pun the pun, once you start playing, you'll get hooked. <laughs> oh. Right, okay. So we've got a little nibble, boys. Don't, don't, get, don't go too early. Yeah, don't go too early. Everybody has their own methods and stuff. When I do guides and lakes and stuff, some people all prefer other lakes or spots. This looks like another sleeper. These are little fish. So an 87 gram sleeper is a, is a decently sized sleeper. They only really go to about 400 grams naturally. But we're improving our float fish. And not much experience for that. Also, it's not just the bigger the fish, the more experience. It's it And, and the more money you'll gain from that. It's also... Big fish for their species. So a 500 gram roach, which is quite a decent roach, is worth more than a 500 gram common carp because common carp grow up to like 40 by 50 kilos as opposed to roach, which may grow up to two kilos. So you get more money and more experience for that. And we'll show you a few bits as well. All right, we're going to catch one more fish before we head on over to Mosquito, which is one of my favorite lakes. But it's, it's a really fun, you can fish with a maximum of three rods. So you're not just sitting here with a float fish. Later on, you can have two feeder rods out whilst you float fish, or you could do a bit of spinning and all that sort of stuff. What's this one? Is, it, is this a, oh, it's a little tiny crusion carp. That is a small crusion. Um, now, we'll have a look at the, I'll show you the fish, right? And the records, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> some of these are ridiculous. In this lake, Right. By default, it shows you the records for this lake, okay? Don't expect to beat any of these records. These are server-wide, all the different servers. This is the record ever fish for this size, like the Chinese sleeper, 460 grams in this lake, and all this sort of good stuff. Frogs, you can actually catch frogs later on, on the fly. Not the fly, a fly. Um, and the, But you can also get a better idea. Let's say you go to a new lake and you fancy going for cruising carp. You can just get a good idea of what baits to use. Um, this one was caught on a worm. This one's sweet dough. This one is honey dough. This is a bit of potato. And this is a bit of bread. And you can sort of get a better idea. But if we look at um, absolute records, the biggest fish on the server on any of the venues that we can fish at. As you'll see, big head carp, 45 kilos. Catfish, 125 kilos. Imagine fighting one of them. I haven't got close even on my main account to that. You know, I'm up to the sort of... Oh, I think we've got a fish. Oh. Now, this one is a little bit better. So it's 106 grams and you get this little tick mark. So, and this is a, it says this is a record fish and it's valued highly. It means it's, you know, this, the green tick mark is a better fish, right? It's a, like a good size fish for its species. So it's worth a little bit more. And then you've got a yellow check mark, which are really rare. I've only caught like seven of those for different species, meaning it's a really good fish for their species. Um, and then you've got the fabled blue check mark, which is just an absolute dinosaur of a thing. Um, so we can, and you get, before you go to a new lake, each of these, most of these lakes and rivers have 
their own fish in them. Obviously, they don't, you know, jump to different ponds. What I mean is most of them have a, a few different species in them. Most of these will have the same species. Right? I'm, I'm not even speaking English at this point. Right, start again, Loki. Each lake, right, contains a bunch of different species. Most species are shared across all these different rivers and lakes. But there is certain things that you will only catch on a river or some of the, like, the Volkov rivers or Swar River and things later on. Um, but you'll see, like we saw in the records, you can see that we... There's not that many different fish species in here. I'll give you an idea. Just um, If we go to statistics, this is your statistics. So we can see these are the trophies, the blue ones, rare trophies. Um, so that's yellow and that's blue. Um, and you've got tons of different records and everything. What's your record cast? Or your different? These are the different fish species in the game and your biggest fish. So there is a ton of stuff, including mussels, which I've caught a few. And obviously the frogs, crayfish, lovely big tench, which is one of my favorite. I, I fish for about 15 years, mainly for carp and tench in the UK. Um, and then you've got what you've caught your fish on and all this sort of good stuff. Really valuable sort of stuff. What you've caught your most fish on, what baits. Um, <laughs> there's a rat on a bicycle because you know reasons um and what i've eaten um haven't eaten anything yet <clears throat> there is um a thing called drag which we'll go through when we get a um a rod with a reel either feeder or float fishing later on but um that's the sort of thing. so this is nice and simple fishing like the best way to get good at this game is to experiment right let's say i've been ca i've caught a few fish there maybe i should try a little bit deeper it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Maybe the bigger fish are going a little bit deeper because, you know, it's a bit cloudy. The water's a little bit cooler. Maybe they're sitting down a bit lower. What I will show you um, is I'll get me rig out of the water first and then I will put the depth really high um, and just sort of cast out here. And what's going to happen when you're, when you're fishing too deep, hang on. Is it like a giant deep hole here? is you'll get this, where the float, that means that the, your line and your weight and your bait have hit the ground hit, and it's, there's too much line. So you don't really want that because it's hard to tell when you get a bite. So you might, even if you want to fish on the bottom, you need to sort of go over depth so it floats like on sideways and then sort of edge it down. In, cast in the same spot, edge it down and you'll fish nicely on the bottom. It will sort of say as well later on. So we're fishing deep now. So we're going to cast into the middle a bit more. Um, we'll go for one more bite. You do also oh, got to keep an eye on this this slack line because you if you just if I wanted to strike now I got a big bite and I just went Rit. I'm not even getting rid of the slack line. So you need to make sure that you strike hard enough that that tightens up for us. Um, come on, fishy. I just want one bite, hit or miss, and then we're gonna go over to the second lake. It's not gonna not gonna bite here. So this is a perfect example. You might go, okay, I'm gonna try a bit deeper in this little spot and go, okay it's not working a lot of the smaller fish tem generally tend to, depending on the species obviously to sort of generally sort of go quite shallow generally i fish quite shallow because i find it the best method but you might find that actually going fishing a bit deeper is getting you the bigger fish maybe less fish but the bigger fish and stuff like that so we're just not getting a bite let's head let's head it on over so if we hit escape and we'll go to the um click on that and um, we can go to Mosquito Lake straight away. A quiet lake surrounded by pathless Novgordian forests. In a small village situated on a steep bank of a lake. You can buy most essential commodities here. Also there you can sell fish and repair your tackle. Which is, you will have to repair your tackle. But don't worry about that for like ages. Because as we level up we're going to be buying new tackle, new rods and improved equipment. So often that we probably won't ever need to repair the beginner stuff. So this is one of our fish mates. Perfect beginner at angling. That's... That's what we want, boys. So we're quickly, before we finish up, head on over here and I'll just show you the shops. And then next episode, we'll have a little wander around the lake and, and um, sort of, you know, discuss about a few different methods we can do and what we should be spending our first money on. So. <clears throat> this is a lovely little lake. Lots of different methods of fishing work on it. It's uh, one of my favourites. Um, so here we are. Oh, just a little thing before I forget. There's competitions in this game, um, like matches. So you can create your own competitions. You can invite your friends. Um, on the chat screen, I'll show you the chat in a minute. So you, this guy's having a competition on Mosquito Lake. 
and between levels of 1 and 25, 27. It's 50 silver to get in. We've got, or oh, 5 silver, sorry. So we've got 50 silver. That's all good. We can join that. We can click on it and it says we, we're going after any fish species and it's the total weight. Not the biggest fish, total weight. They're really fun little things if you want to get involved in those or create your own with friends. So there is chat in this game. So if you hit Q to chat, you'll see that you are put in a basically a chat room so you don't see other people around the lake you're always on your own okay because it basically it would get too laggy for one if you saw everybody fishing around the lake and also everybody would steal all the good spots wouldn't it <laughs> you'd, you'd end up fishing somewhere shit because everybody's in the way so you can i can see in this village this little spot basically where the shopping area is there is 21 people so if i was to chat now i'd be chatting to those guys so you can move um, and what I would suggest, so we can go to the village here, there's lots of different fan channels and stuff like this, or you can create your own channel if you've got buddies that you want to play with. But I'm going to give you a tip here, is to go on, so we hit this little cog, um, we go all the way down to the L's, and scroll, and yeah. There's me, look, it's Loki Doki, 29 players. We've got our own little chat room and we help each other out and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we've got a bunch of members, including my main account and all that sort of good stuff. So we're gonna join this chat room. And it's really good, because then if you've got any, if you wanna join up, this is free to, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. This game is free to play, right? There is a premium currency if you wanna speed things up. You can go premium which basically gives you like twice a, a chunk more experience every time you catch a fish. But in my, I use premium because I thought, you know, I don't mind helping out, you know, supporting the, the uh, guys that make it. But what I found with premium is that you were leveling up faster, but you were making, this is the main currency, silver. But because you were leveling up faster, you weren't saving the money quick enough. And, and you might be at a level where you can use a carp rod, for instance, but... You haven't saved up the money because you've your experience. You know what I mean, right? Um, so actually, don't worry too much about this. You can also buy gold because in a lot of the shops you can buy rods with silver or gold. But to be honest, don't worry about that at all. Maybe later on you decide you want to speed things up a little bit, or there's a rod you really want and you don't mind giving the developers a few quid. But finally, before we finish up, we've got the shops. And they're pretty much the same shops everywhere we go. Um, they're sometimes less or sometimes more. But um, So let's say we've spent a day fishing, right? Blah, 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 lovely day fishing, right? We've got a keep net. There's our, there's our five fish so far. Um, two decent sized ones. I'll take it, I'll take it. And uh, so first thing you do is you want to sell your fish, all right? Because that's how you make your silvers, lads. But first, first, first thing, before the first thing, the... the yeah, before that, if there is a cafe at the place you're going at, you want to go to the cafe. Because they'll have these sort of special, almost like missions in, a, in an RPG. Where they're saying, look, if you catch, um, like this for instance, if you catch three Chinese sleepers between 20 grams and 84 grams, we'll give you 4.85. So you actually make a little bit more money. What you could do is you could come in here before you start fishing and go, oh, okay, they're looking for small cruising carp i might actually go and target that species make a little bit more money these are the countdowns so this is only available for 41 minutes more but we can't sell our fish in the shop here because we caught them on a different lake so you always go here first check this if there is any orders that you can make a little bit more money at and uh, get rid of the fish there if not once you've done all that you can go here so you can see the value of each fish you know these are these are small fish right even for their size so Despite the fact that this is 87 grams, or let's do this. So that's 128 gram cruising. It's worth 0 0.03, not very much at all. This one is not gigantically bigger, but because it's a good fish for its size, it's worth 1.4. What you can do is just click here, select all. You'll see the total that we're going to get for that, which is one, one pound, one silver, 90 bronze. I don't know, other cents, pence, whatever it is. So we've sold our fish. Don't want to keep them in the fish net too long because they will rot. <laughs> so you can go for a couple of days. Um, so let's have a look. So that's the cafe and that done. So the other buildings, you, the first building you want to go to when you visit a new lake or river is the administration building. Because here you can buy a map for the lake. Because if I hit M currently, I've got no map. I don't know what it looks like. So you buy this for three silver. Um, there we go. And then 
Don't have to do anything in it. When you hit M, you'll see the lake. So this lake has got much more features. We've got a campsite over here. We've got a nice deep hole here. Could be good for bream, catfish. I don't think there is any bur, but any any deep fish. I actually catch some nice roach in here as well. And uh, like bream, I love deep water. And you're, they're quite big slabs of meat, the old bream. So this is once you've got your map. And um, there is an ATM, but that is for when if you buy gold, you can then transfer it into silver to use on stuff. Um, you've got a table of records here, but you can just you can just do that by looking on your records thing here. Um, we have here is the grocery store. So here you buy food and drinks. Like I said, don't have to worry too much about it at the beginning. Um, you'll learn very quickly, and we'll talk about that later on as we level up what, what food and drink does in more detail. But the good thing about this, because it's a relatively newbie lake, is over here... So instead of wasting money buying food and drink, there's a field kitchen. And this is only on this lake. Once a day in game time, so it's 4.16 p.m. now, we can hit E on this field kitchen. And as you can see in the bottom left, we're full up and it's free. So it's just a little helpful thing to get you going. So once a day, you can come here and get free food. Next up, we've got the tackle shop. And this is where things get fruity. So we've got... A t this gives you an example of the types of fishing. Telescopic rods. This is what we're using at the moment there's much better versions of this things that are longer or f are better for fighting bigger fish and all that sort of good stuff got bolognese rod which is your more your your standard sort of rod uh, float fishing rod which i quite enjoy spinning rods for spinning um casting rods for casting like lures and stuff and jigs and plugs and all sorts of good stuff like that you've got feeder rods which is one of my personal favorites um, got picker rods, which is kind of like if you fancy a bit of challenge. They're quite light, but they can catch some big fish. Match rods is your classic float fishing gig. Jerking rods for for masturbation purposes. No, for jerking and carp rods for bream, obviously. No carp, clearly. Um, and then you've got a ton of different reels, and it does look a bit daunting at first. But as in the next couple of episodes, we'll talk about what you need, to, what you should be looking to buy first, and stuff like this. Tons of different lines with different uh, load capacities and colours and styles and all that sort of good stuff. Then you've got lures for spinning. You've got your, you got your spinners. You got your spoons. You got your wobblers. You got your top water wobblers. You got your jerk baits. You got your soft plastics, and you got your wacky worms. <laughs> I don't think I've, I've even looked at that bit before. I've never scrolled down that far. Um, then you got your floats. Various different types, hooks, all that good stuff. So hooks is an interesting one. The better quality hook you, you generally buy, the m less likely it is that you are to lose the fish. Occasionally you will lose a fish that pulls off or gets untangles itself or gets, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, the size of the hook is basically using, the bigger the hook you use, the sort of generally, this is a very general thing, the bigger the fish you're likely to catch because a big old hook is going to scare off a little roach they're, they're going to see that that's a giant hook mate i'm not even i can't even get that hook in my mouth mate you know that sort of thing so when you're beginning off with your light tackle with your new rod you can't catch you might want to catch big fish but you can't because if you hooked into a 10 kilo carp it would snap off it'll snap the line within a second so you don't want to go in here and buy a massive fat hook and stick a big fat worm on it and then hope for the best. You want to sort of edge yourself in, but we'll cover that more. We've got weights for feeder fishing. Tons of different baits for this in this game. A lot of the, which you can create yourself later on. Or you can dig for worms. You could get disconnected from the server. I think that's probably my internet. It's been farting. I think it's because it's so hot in the UK. I think my internet's farting about. But I think... That is a good place to leave anyway. We're about to wrap up there. So there he is. Look, a perfect ad. Russian Fishing 4. Come and check it out. Make sure you join our Loki Doki chat room. And then if you've got any basic questions, feel free to ask. We help each other out. We're sending each other baits and stuff. It's really good laugh. We have such much fun. And, I'm, and make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're going to do lots of fishing videos. I'm going to do some guides on basic float fishing, feed fishing, spin fishing, all that sort of good stuff, the various methods that we're going to learn. And also, with this sort of second account, I'm going to do some sort of fishing trips as well and show you the highlights, some of the fish I caught and stuff like that. And also, I'm going to do lake and river guides, some of the best spots around the lake that you're going to catch the fish at. So if you're interested in any of that whatsoever, drop this video a like, drop this video a subscribe, drop the channel, hit the subscribe button on the channel. You'd think I'd 
not been doing this for two and a half years, but you know what I mean. Subscribe button, that thing. Hit the bell and you'll get notifications. All that good stuff. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you come and fish with us. Even if you just want to hang out for a bit. It's a free game. Give it a try. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Oh, tight lines. That's, that's like good luck. Break a leg. Being fishing turns. Unless you're stuck in a tree, then tight. All right, bye-bye.